Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about chapter 10 from the Helicopter Flying Handbook, which is all about advanced flight maneuvers. Our last video was about basic flight maneuvers, and now we're going to talk about more advanced stuff. You might say, well, what does that mean? Well, you're going to find out. So when we're flying a helicopter, you know, helicopters are great aircraft it can do a lot of things with a helicopter that you cannot do with an airplane such as fly and land in a very tight space so whenever you're going to do something like that you're going to do a confined area operation it's normally recommend that you do some reconnaissance so how does that start well that starts with a high reconnaissance so the high reconnaissance is where you're going to determine things like what's the direction of the wind figure out where you want to touch down does it look like it's suitable or not what's the approach path going to be you know what's my out if you will now, a lot of these maneuvers we're going to discuss, I have videos for these specific maneuvers on my YouTube channel. So I would highly recommend that you have a look at those, especially if you're flying the Schweitzer. Because I'll go through, you know, what's a more detailed procedure for these kinds of things. So high reconnaissance, you're going to be up there three to five hundred feet in the air. And you want to make sure that you're in a spot where if you did have an engine failure, there's a safe place to land. So you're coming in and you're going to orbit your spot. Now, generally speaking, it's best to be at about a 45 degree angle to the place that you're trying to land. You know, don't be right on top of it. And don't be way, way away from it either. That will help you estimate the height of any obstacles that you're trying to fly over. So that you have your high reconnaissance and then, you know, you're circling your point typically. And then you get to your low reconnaissance. So the low reconnaissance, what is that? Well, that's below 300 feet, basically. You're coming in and essentially you're doing your approach. You're just verifying what you found with the high reconnaissance. You want to make sure that there were no unseen obstacles. You didn't see when you're higher up, you know, power lines, power lines are really bad for helicopters. You want to make a decision about where you're going to land before you get below that magical ETL speed. You want to stay above that ETL speed before you start descending in to your spot. Right. Now, another thing you can do, by the way, is you can do ground reconnaissance. And that's the best. If you can visit the place you're going to land on the ground, then you can really see, oh, there's some power lines that I might not be able to notice. What's the surface look like? You know, these are things that you can determine later. And in a little bit, we'll talk about confined area operations. I don't know why they break it up this way in the book, but they do. Right. Then there's maximum performance takeoffs. You know, you want to take off straight up. Well, depending on the helicopter, you might be able to do that. Now, remember, even just a little bit of forward speed increases the efficiency of that rotor system. So you might need to have some forward speed. So, you know, here's a picture of a maximum performance takeoff, which doesn't necessarily mean a vertical takeoff. So let's say you're doing this in the Schweitzer. What can you do in the Schweitzer? Well, you can just pour in the power and you can go straight up till you clear your obstacle and then gently start pushing forward on the cyclic. 
and transition into forward flight. If you have the space, though, you can give it a little bit of forward momentum from the very start. Now, also, if you're flying an underpowered helicopter like a Robinson, you can't do that. You know, Robinson, you put in the maximum amount of power and then you have to start creeping forward and you might have to get it above ETL speed for it to really even climb at all. So in the case of an underpowered helicopter like the Robbie, uh, you're going to have to push forward and, you know, get to that 24 knots. And you might be riding that ETL shutter all the way up until you clear your obstacle. Same story, though. When you get to the top, you can push forward a little bit on the cyclic and transition into a normal climb out. You can also do the opposite of the high performance takeoff. You can do a running or rolling takeoff. Why would you do that? Well, maybe you don't have the power to do a regular takeoff. You don't have the power to bring that thing up into a hover. Now, personally, unless you were going to die if you stayed on the ground, this sounds like a horrible idea. If you don't have wheels on your helicopter, at least. But, you know, it's something that you can do. You know, maybe you landed somewhere and you really got to get out of there. But you don't have the performance. It got really hot. You put on some weight. You know, whatever. You know, something changed between when you got in there and when you got out. Or maybe you had to do a roll on landing to get in there. So how do you do this? Well, pretty much what you're going to do is you're going to raise the collective. You're going to get a little bit of light and you're just going to slowly start creeping forward. You can have a little bit of forward cyclic. So it tells you right here in the book. It says, increase the throttle. Get your power in there. And once it gets light, start moving the cyclic slightly forward. And bring up additional collective. And as you accelerate and you get more speed, the rotors become more effective. You can pop it up into ground effect and then kind of transition to a more normal situation. Again, probably not a great idea to be doing this unless you absolutely have to. Okay, some other maneuvers. A quick stop or rapid deceleration. This is a great training maneuver. And why is it a good training maneuver? Because it requires a lot of coordination. So you practice it at a height that is going to give you clearance for the tail rotor. And you also will get a little bit of practice for auto rotations for later. Because in a sense, this is a little bit similar. Okay, so how does this work? You're flying into the wind. You're flying, let's say, 40 feet in the air. Normally, we'll say that you're entering at around 40, 45 knots. So you're flying along, and all of a sudden, you have to do a quick stop. There's some sort of obstruction in your in your way or the tower told you that it wants you to land at a point pretty much right in front of you you know one of those fixed wing guys just pull out in front of you or something right so you're going to start like here at position three you're going to put in some aft cyclic 
to reduce this ground speed. And at the same time, this is where that coordination comes into. You're going to lower the collective so that you don't balloon up. Now it's called a quick stop, but you want to think of this as a slow stop. Again, I'd recommend watch the YouTube video all about quick stops. So you're going to pull back and drop the collective a little bit. And you want to get that timing just right. You know, you don't want to climb and you don't want to descend. So you want to get to point four. So what happens at point four? Well, at point four, you want to initiate your recovery by lowering the nose and you're going to do a steep descent to the ground. So we're doing a steep descent and then we get down to position five. Now we want to recover. All right. So how do we recover at position five? We increase the collective and we also will put in pedal because we're just suddenly upping the power. It's an awful lot like the recovery from an auto rotation. Okay, other techniques, other maneuvers. Steep approach. What's a steep approach? Steep approach is more than 13 degrees. That's a steep approach. You said 7 to 12 is normal so that's steep why would you use it you're trying to clear an obstacle how do you do a steep approach well there's a couple of different ways you can go about it you know here if you look at this picture you kind of fly into that site picture if you will you just sort of level off and then you begin the steep approach if there isn't an obstacle, you know, if you're just practicing these at the airport, you might just have that steep approach all the way down, if you will. So what you're going to do is you're going to look and you're going to say, all right, where is my point going to intercept the windscreen for this to be that right angle for the steep approach? We're still going to fly down that wire just like we normally do. It's just that that wire is going to be angled up a lot more. So we're flying into this first position and then we're going to start to descend. How do we do that? We're going to pull aft cyclic. That's going to slow us down. Probably going to have to put in some pedal. And we're going to reduce that collective to start coming down. And we're going to have to just slowly drop that collective. Now, eventually we're going to get to point three. All right, so what's going on at point number three here? We're starting to get closer to the ground and we're on that back side of that power curve. So as we go slower and slower, we're going to have to add power. So we're going to get to a point where we're adding in power because again, we want to avoid settling with power. So we're pulling back, pulling back, upping the collective, upping the collective, and we're just creeping in. And at a certain point, you're going to have to start actually pushing forward in order for this thing to continue to come down. So you can ride that ETL all the way down, you know, from, let's say, 50 feet down to the ground. So what you'll find is on the controls, you're pushing forward 
pushing to your spot, as sometimes we'll say, and pulling the collective. In the book, it says, you know, you're going to lose that ETL higher. So you're going to have to increase collective to prevent the settling and push forward to your spot. What's the opposite shallow approach? You're landing somewhere and you just don't have the power. You're doing a run on landing. Well, basically you're going to treat this thing like it's an airplane. You're going to come in at say three to five degrees. Just like an airplane would you come in, you get a little bit slow, just about ETL speed. You level the helicopter, you essentially flare the helicopter first, and then you level it. You know, if anything, you want the nose a little bit lower, then you want the nail nosed too high. You don't want to hit the heels of the skid and then have it just go bam and smack the nose down on you. That's not good. Also remember that there are shoes on these skids so if you're not level you might actually wear the skids themselves and not the shoes now here is something that takes a little bit of getting used to if you do a run on landing you might have this tendency to think okay i touched the ground what do i want to do well of course i want to drop the collective well be careful because if you drop the collective, now you, suddenly those shoes start to bite. And you can roll the helicopter over, especially if you have any kind of sideways movement. So you want to just keep that collective up for a little bit. Let that thing decelerate. And only after the helicopter is getting slower and it's about stopped, then you can slowly drop that collective if you drop it too quick then you know the nose is going to dip down sharply and bad things might happen by the way there are other circumstances where you might want to do a run on landing such as a anti-torque system failure of some sort so it's not just when you don't have the power but that would be the most common situation. Okay, other maneuvers. Slope operations. Again, I have a video for this. So go have a, have a look at that. How does this work? You want to land on a slope. Okay. Why would you want to do that? Well, the world isn't flat. Sorry to burst your bubble if you thought it was. So... Here's my slope and I want to come in. I want to approach the slope. Normally I'll approach it at a 45 degree angle and I want to touch down with the upslope skid first. So here I come down to position two. Now a key to getting this right is to do it slow. You cannot be too slow. I was flying with somebody recently getting them ready for his check ride. And I told him, you cannot be too slow on this. An examiner is not going to say, boy, you took too long to land on this slope. But if you slam the thing down, he's going to tell you about it. Because if you do this too quickly, you can get dynamic rollover, which is a problem. So what you want to do is you want to get that slope there first now by the way if you're flying something like the schweitzer the left skid hangs low so if you land on a slope with the left skid being the upslope skid that means it's going to contact the ground sooner and it's going to roll maybe a little bit more to drop the right skid if you go the opposite way, well, there's not going to be as much of a roll. 
Okay, so once you've gotten that skid down, you want to very slowly drop the collective while simultaneously pushing into your hill. See how the rotor is tilted? And once you're fully down, then, and only then, do you neutralize the controls. And of course, drop the cyclic, or sorry, the collective all the way down. How do you take off? You just reverse that. You start by putting cyclic into the hill, slowly raising the collective until it brings up the downhill skid, pop it into a hover, scoot away from the hill before you turn. Make sure you're clear of the hill. Don't turn and put the tail rotor right into the hill. That's bad. Can't be done too slowly. So take your time. Okay, so then the book gets back to confined area operations, which I don't know why they had this way after the reconnaissance thing, but, you know, things to keep in mind when you're doing confined area ops. Wind. Wind whips around structures like trees and buildings, can cause turbulence, you get updrafts and downdrafts. So you need to be cognizant of that if you're coming into land, into a confined area. So how do you do this? You do your high reconnaissance. Do you do your low reconnaissance? And you come in and you land. Now, there are different checklists out there. Uh, one that I like to use is WAPS. You want to know what's the wind. Well, how do I figure out the wind? If I'm flying the Schweitzer, it probably has a GPS. I can fly around in a circle and look at my ground speed, and that will tell me which way the wind is blowing. I could fly a constant radius circle, constant bank circle on the ground and see which way I drift. That's another way I can look at water. If there's any water nearby or trees that are bending, you know, look at different wind indicators. So that's W. O. What are the obstacles? Are there any buildings, wires, trees, etc.? P, path in, path out. And that includes an escape path. If I have to abort, what's my abort plan? If I'm coming in, I'm like, nope, this isn't going to work. And then P, power. Do I have enough power to come in and do a hover? How do I know? Well, if you have enough power to do an out-of-ground effect hover above your spot, you definitely have enough power to come in and land to a hover. And then finally, S, suitability. Is the landing surface suitable for me? Is it really wet and soft? Is there a huge slope? Is there a bunch of dirt or snow? You know, suitability, WAPs, winds, obstructions, path in, path out, power, and suitability. Doing a takeoff, of course, you're going to do a max performance takeoff, most likely, to get out of there. And that's a confined area operation. And that brings us to pinnacles. Are you landing on top of a hill or on top of a building? You know, how does that work? So if you're approaching a pinnacle, you can take advantage of updrafts if you come in on the upwind side. You know, you're landing into the wind, which you should always be landing into the wind anyway. Especially if it's a pinnacle because, you know, it's just out there. You can come in from any direction you want. If it's a true pinnacle, 
you know, if it's a rooftop, eh, maybe there's another tall building nearby. And you're also going to want to do a steeper than normal approach. So the greater the winds, the steeper the approach. And why is that? Because you're trying to avoid this turbulence. You got these updrafts, downdrafts, and they can be kind of violent. So you come in, do a nice steep approach, and you land on your pinnacle. What about taking off? Well, taking off, you want to avoid flight in the you know avoid region of that hv diagram height velocity diagram well if you're on a pinnacle you don't worry so much about the height just get moving a little bit faster you know, essentially fly off of your pinnacle get some speed even if you were to suddenly descend a little bit well, you're on a pinnacle. It'll be okay. Okay, so that is chapter 10, which is all about advanced flight maneuvers in a helicopter.